Office Manager on 212. Go ahead. I got verbal confirmation from the 45th Wing Commander. We are go. I would like you to proceed. CGLS, pick up the clock on your mark. CGLS, copy. Three, two, one, mark. T minus the is go. 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 Orbiter AP, start. NTD, Houston flight. I have two seconds of train back hold remaining. Two, two, two seconds. seconds. Discovery OTC, close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. CGLS is go for main engine start. Thanks for all the work you did getting this uh, ready to go and uh, appreciate all, all your work. And for those watching, get ready to witness the majesty and the power of Discovery as she lifts off one final time. This is Space Vidcast 405 for March 11th, 2011. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me, as always, is the beautiful, lovely, wonderful, and talented Carrie Higginbotham. We are back. Oh my gosh, that is an epic video. Holy cow. That's actually just a small snippet of the entire video. Yeah, no, it, it's, uh, it goes on for quite a while, but it, it's all just mesmerizing. And you saw the URL at the bottom of the screen if you're watching this on demand. Go back, check out that URL. There's a bit.ly URL on YouTube. It's from Real NASA, and uh, they've got a lot more before the video and a lot more after the video, and definitely go watch that. Uh, the chat room asked prior to the show, have they updated the video with the landing yet because STS-133 has landed? Uh, no, they have not. So, uh, there you go. It's just all... It's <laughs> no, all the, they have not. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the different launch... Uh, all the different launch angles that they had in there, and uh, you know, I saw that, and they just did such a great job of doing the music and the whole thing. And that was the last launch of Discovery ever. They will not launch again. There is, unlike Atlantis, where we had the first launch of it, first last launch of Atlantis, right. and we're all at the press site, and we're all kind of like, mm, she'll probably launch again, and she's probably going to launch again, right? STS-135 is looking like it's a real mission. Uh, 
this is it. Discovery's done. She's landed. They actually, uh, when when she landed and came to wheel stop, they marked the front end part of the nose on Do the have runway. Do we pictures of that yet? No, I don't believe so. So there's a mark on the runway as to the final landing spot of Discovery that would be permanently etched into that runway, which I think is pretty cool. Is there a shot of it somewhere? I will look it up. Keep no, going. that's right. There's, there's no need for that. Okay. But speaking of awesomely great shots of Space Shuttle Discovery, mm -hmm. you, you may have probably already seen this on YouTube because it has a million plus views, but it's just so cool. We have to show it to you anyhow. <sighs> this is the airline shot. There was an airliner that was flying by as Discovery was launching. Check this out. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Oh, that's right, you see oh, the, like yeah. the bright light back wow. there? Incredible. Wow. Still see it? That yep, yep. Awesome. It's in the camera. Yeah. Look how fast that's going, man. Look how fast. Are you getting enough video? Yep. Yeah, folks, the space shuttle's going off the right side of the aircraft right now. Those of you on the right side of the aircraft, you can see the space shuttle. Wow. If you have the left side of the aircraft, you probably see people on the right side of the aircraft looking at the space shuttle. Watch the rest of that on the YouTube channel. It's just when you're watching, it's just it's just beautiful. Yeah, it was perfectly clear from the ground as well. So that uh, it, was, it was great. Yeah. Uh, for you know, if if you didn't watch this particular launch, holy cow! <laughs> uh, Discovery wanted to go out with a bang, yeah. and you know, it wasn't necessarily Discovery's fault. But for the first time that I can ever remember. There was a T minus five hold in the ascent, <laughs> in the countdown. That was the and funniest thing because when you're on, when you're at the press site, at least I, I, I don't want to sound snobby, but I, I can't speak for any other area, uh, you know, in the area. I, I don't know if they get the radio or the, you know, the. Um, the PAO or anything radioed in or anything like that, but um, at the press site, we don't really get that unless you're up in the press center, right. which is not where we are. We're outside kind of in, in the middle nice of the tent. field. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we didn't know exactly what was going on. Like mm -hmm. we had our feed going so we could see it, but there were tents next to us that had absolutely no clue. So they're watching the, the huge clock, mm -hmm. right? The, the clock that and everybody watches, and it stops, and everyone's like, oh, what the hell's going on? Here's a fun story. So we're at the press it was site. Terrible. So we're at the press site, and if you guys were watching our live launch coverage, we're just bringing in people for interviews, left and right and left and right, and as many people as we can get our hands on, we're interviewing them. NASA, we had Bill Nye on. Uh, we had a bunch of really awesome people, and right as they started announcing the issues with uh, the, I think it was a ground computer, it, as soon as they started announcing that, um, our return feed started showing issues. So when you're watching the yeah. graphic, it switched to red. And uh, so we're sitting here going, uh-oh, something's up. Yeah. Right as we were bringing an astronaut on for interview. And if you don't know this, astronauts all have handlers. So they well, don't just walk around. Everyone at the press site has a handler. Well, anyone that's going on, well, anyone that's any, bad, any, right? yeah, anyone who's going to be interviewed. Usually yeah. there's like a sign-up sheet and the whole nine in it. Oh, uh, she did not like us. Oh, no. Because oh, this handler was not happy with us because we were having some technical issues going on. No, no, there were no technical issues. We were trying to figure out what was going on with the hold. I, I suppose I told her we were having technical issues, and she was like, well, you have five minutes. <laughs> and she just would count us down, and she's like, you're down to three minutes. She's like, if you weren't dilly-dallying over there, I'm like, well, <laughs> we're in a hold. That we, you know, this, didn't, this shouldn't even happen. I don't know what's going on. And she'd be like, well, you got two minutes. And she would just stand there. And the best part is, though, that the handlers don't want to come on camera. Mm -hmm. 
And so theoretically, if we really wanted to be really bitchy, we could have just kept talking to him. And he would have talked to us, too. He was a great guy. He was trying to tell us, like, oh, I hate that computer. And, oh, that stupid thing. We hate oh, yeah. that thing he's, goes off. He was awesome. He was and why this is terrible and all that fun jazz. Oh, it was, man. It was, that was hysterical. And I, I was, like, this close to just continuing, just completely ignoring her. And she's just barely off camera right where I can see her. And she's, like, doing one of these. Like, for sure... I didn't think anybody did this anymore, but they, she actually did. She was not happy. So, uh, like we mentioned, this was the last launch of Space Shuttle Discovery. I do want to correct something. I think I said accidentally said nose um, nose cone. It's actually the nose gear that's marked on yes. the runway, not the nose, not the nose itself. The the gear stop point. I, I think I said something wrong there. So, just to clarify, it's the gear that's marked on the runway. Um, and actually, yeah. So. Uh, that the space shuttle program is coming to an end. We've got uh, actually let's let's pop over to NASA TV really quick. Right now, live during this show, NASA is rolling space shuttle Endeavor out to the launch pad, and so we've got the very painfully slow. Check this out, painfully slow. Migra there you go. This is live. Yes, it's moving. It's moving. There's no, you can't tell. Now, there is a reason whenever you watch rollout, <laughs> it's done time-lapsed for you. Yeah. <laughs> Down to a nice little 60 seconds. This takes hours and hours and hours for it to roll from the vehicle assembly building to the actual launch pad. So this will be the final launch of Space Shuttle Endeavor. We just finished up Space Shuttle Discovery, last launch of Space Shuttle Endeavor. While we were down at the press site doing the STS-133 coverage, we talked to, who was the PAO that we talked with first? Oh, we talked with Bob Jacobs first. Bob Jacobs, I believe, clarified and said that STS-135 is almost certainly a go. They have figured out the funding. They believe they figured out the funding. They know what's going on there. They're, they're pretty much set. So uh, it's not 100%, but right. it's like 99.95% right. that STS-135 is go, which means we've got a Space Shuttle Endeavor coming up uh, in May. April. May. I thought it was April. Chat room, help me. Is it April or May for April Endeavor? 19. April 19th. Thank you. That's what I keep saying. Well, there you go. Because it's so close to yours now. You well... April 19th for that. And then when is 135? June. So nothing happens in May. June 28th. How ISDC like happens in May. How dare you? No launch happens in May. No, no shuttle no launch, launch happens no in, shuttle May. Launch in May. So this program's winding down. It's coming to an end. This could possibly be the last year of the space shuttle for realsies this time. <laughs> for realsies. Right. Well, who was it? I forget. I think it was Jason Ryan actually was talking about how, you know, there's the end of uh, the space shuttle you know, program patch, mm -hmm. the really cool one with the mm -hmm. colors and the stars and the thing, yep. and uh, how they had to had to make more of them to say 2011 on them. <laughs> <laughs> so he was really happy. He got the, uh, you know, 1981 to, to 2010 and also the 1981. Robert Perlman mentioned to, uh, that at Space Up. Uh, Space Up Houston, he was talking about, he had collector's item stuff there, and he said, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's not one of those really high I market items things, but if you can get two patches that are essentially the same thing, but they had to modify one, mm -hmm. they kind of become uh, a minor, a, it's a good way to kind of start your collector's items for space, because right. then you can bring it up to people and be like, what's wrong with one of these patches? And that was, who was it that was talking to us about the, the patches? On um, oh no, you weren't there for that. I apologize. I have no idea. Uh, there was somebody else that was talking. You know how they had to take somebody off of the one thirty three mission. Yeah, that was me telling you because that was actually mentioned up uh, in Space the, Houston. Right, but in the patches mm -hmm. themselves, mm -hmm. how they, they they were different. That uh, most of the crew. Uh, and even like the guys in the bunny suits and the whole nine, that they would just offset the patch a little bit so you could see both names. <laughs> so instead, because they they're supposed to, you know, sew them right on yep. top of the other one, and everyone just kind of went Meep, just a little <laughs> bit so you could see. <laughs> clever. Yes. That's yeah. Clever. Cobra and Bowen. Thank you. I, you know, you know me. Uh, yeah. So they just kind of did that a little. And I so before that that we had to break uh, the. As the space shuttle program winds down, we're starting to look at new programs that can send astronauts to space in America. Not necessarily a NASA uh, created vehicle, but vehicles like Liberty, which is the five segment solid rocket booster from the defunct Ares program, as well as the uh, uh, first stage from the Ariane 5, I believe, if I remember that correctly. I think so, right? Tacked together. Right. And that is uh, from ATK. 
and they're going for CC Dev 2 certification. And um, uh, I completely mind blank. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, no, because everything, the CC Dev story, go. Uh, I can't, I can't because my computer's freaking out at me. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, so <laughs> NASA is inviting uh, six different companies to there compete in CC Dev. Uh, there you go. Read that link because <laughs> just <laughs> knowledge don't like that. Ever do that? Ever just like you like it, just something? Who you are know? you talking to? Yeah, you okay. <laughs> Remember, you carry the show. Oh sure, something. Uh, <laughs> one interesting thing is, uh, so CC Dev is, if I remember correctly, it's, it's the humans to the space station, and then we've got COTS, which is. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, like SpaceX going for COTS, which is cargo. Yeah, commercial crew development program. Yeah. So, so yeah, CC Dev. Uh, yep, so it is looking like there may be a possibility in the somewhat near future, how is that for definitive, mm. of actual vehicles in the commercial space sector bringing humans up to the space station. So while the space shuttle is winding down, mm -hmm. programs like COTS and CC Dev 2 Th that's that's in my opinion they're going to be the future of space travel there's some pretty cool stuff that can come out of these things and it's really exciting what the commercial sector is able to build without being tied to what the government says because remember nasa doesn't build rockets congress builds rockets on that note <laughs> i'm just saying you have to use solid fuels uh on that uh, on that note let's take a break and when we come back let's take a look at some other launches that we missed during sts 133 Stalling. I've I've been given the stall command from my director. How about hi Emporium? Uh, oh, hi Luke. Luke. Hi Brenda. Actually, uh, I'll use this moment to talk about uh, our Roku channel. Pete Reeset in the. I can never remember if I'm saying his name right. Probably not. Mm. Uh, in the chat room is one of our awesome developers uh, yeah. who helps build our different channels. For example, our Roku channel and our Boxy channel and helps us get out to the world. And he has updated the Roku channel to version 1.4. It's a free update for all users. And you can go, if you've got a Roku or if you've won one of the Rokus, which will be mailed out very shortly. I'm sorry they didn't make it before STS-133, but try them before 134. Uh, if you go to the Space Vidcast channel on your Roku, run the update, and now if you're an Epic subscriber, you're going to be able to watch Epic videos right there on your Roku. In addition, a launch calendar on your Roku and more cool features coming to the Roku channel somewhat soon. Over 30,000 people have installed the Space Vidcast Roku channel and it's growing and it just keeps getting better and better. So a huge thank you to Pete. And of course, thank if we're going to talk about development, we have to just throw out Perfor software once again. We had, in my opinion, the highest quality streaming of any launch coverage for the, the other, other than the KSC feed that we had, uh, of any, any launch provider. And that was absolutely because of Perfor Software, who, who got us the Mac Pro you can't see sitting right back down there. It's, back it's an insanely huge, powerful machine. It allows us to broadcast in HD and standard definition. And it's going to get even better for Space Shuttle uh, Endeavor's final flight and Space Shuttle Atlantis's final flight as we continue to improve the quality based on this new hardware. And that is entirely thanks to Perfor Software. And we thank them. We tried to thank them at the T-minus nine minute uh, lift, but there was so much chaos at the time, yeah. it was very difficult to do. On that note, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. For the entire crew, comm check. MS1, MS2. With hands held high, an era's last reach for the sky, we must rekindle the connection to all our space program has given. To the heart of America and America's hearts. To the engines of our economy and keeping our nation secure. For the sparkle in our children's eye. To all who made this possible. And to those that will continue the journey. Think outside the circle. Then we read you all loud and clear. I gotta say, um, that is one of my favorite space commercials oh, of all sure. time. It's just a, the subtle, like, uh, especially I think it's the doctor's office when they got the subtle shuttle in the background. Yeah. I'm like, yes. And so we were debating which commercial to throw on the show because we, you know, we like to have a nice break point. And uh, 
Um, we went for that one. Uh, why don't you talk about yours really quick? Okay, so hopefully I um, don't mess any of this up. And uh, is my mic a little bit hot? I feel like I'm hearing a whole lot of myself. Anyhow, uh, so Yuri's Night, as you know, is coming up. And Yuri's Night is the celebration of 50 years of human in s humans in space. Yuri Gagarin was the very first human to go up into space. Ben is going to disappear, and I'm going to be the show for the moment, apparently, uh, in 1961. And then, uh, by happenstance, in 1981 was the very first space shuttle launch, uh, which was really kind of cool. So that was 20 years later, and now we're 30 years on top of that, and it's 2011, or 20. 10, 1, anyway, it doesn't matter. 10, uh, twin plus 1. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm trying to say. And so Yuri's Night uh, is a huge celebration, goes across the globe, and well, even into space. Of, oh, yeah, there you go. Intergalactic celebration. I thought I got this one. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, that celebrates just all of, you know, just humanity being in space and just how cool it is and how we're getting off of this planet. And uh, it's it's a party. It's a huge, huge, huge party. And because it is such a huge celebration for this particular, you know, the 50th mm -hmm. milestone, mm -hmm. Um, Yuri's Night has three separate and completely different uh, contests that people can enter into. Um, so first, let me get this URL into the... Thank you. Yuri'sNight.net. In addition to trying to have additional parties, they're trying to see how many contests they can have this year. Right, <laughs> which is kind of funny. It, well, the thing is that it started off with, with one contest that uh, was supposed to be for print medium, and that is sponsored by Space Travelers, I believe. And, uh, yeah, Space Travelers. And the whole idea is that uh, there's that really cool video you've probably seen uh, on YouTube where somebody outside of NASA made about NASA and all these mm -hmm. really cool things. Mm -hmm. sure. It's got a Carl Sagan. We'll play that in post show. Okay, so, mm -hmm. it, you know, Carl Sagan yeah, on yeah, top yeah, of yeah. it. And it's just, it's absolutely beautiful. And, and even people outside of the space industry really, really like this video. So mm -hmm. what Yuri's Night wanted to do and what Space Travelers wanted to help them do was capture all of that into a print medium. Yep. And so your, uh, the contest is to design uh, posters or postcards and that kind of thing to help spread the word about space and space travel and uh, all of that fun stuff. And so there's that one contest. And I'm trying to get all of these correct, so I apologize. And there's the video contest. Right, there's a video contest that is sponsored by Open Luna, yep. um, and that's a $500 uh, prize on that one. I apologize, I don't know the exact prize on the paper contest. But there's a video contest, kind of in the same vein, making a really cool Yuri's Night specific Call to Humanity mm -hmm. video, kind of like they give the, you footage to work with. Yeah, they give you tons of footage to work with, etc., yeah. etc. Et um, and all of those videos have to be in by April first of this year, uh, so that they can be judged and a winner can be announced on Yuri's Night, April twelfth. Um, and then there's a third one where the details aren't all laid out exactly, but I know for sure that the big prize, and this is a huge, huge prize is that you get to go to Russia and have a zero-G type flight, a parabolic flight. Yep. So, uh, if, amazing. So you would be able to... to uh, Apparently those are really cool because they're less stringent over there than we are here. Right. So it's not zero-G corp. So I just want to take that out of your head. But it's a parabolic flight. So you will get the, the same idea. You'll get the weightlessness and, and what have you. And you're going to uh, Baikonur to do it. But that's the ad contest prize. That's the Space Traveler's Prize. It is? Mm -hmm. So there are three contests. Yuri's right. Night.net. You can see all three right there on Yuri's Night. Uh, there you go. So that's... That's That's why we have our minions in the chat room to in help Russia, me. Yuri's Night hosts you. Wow. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. But there's a lot of cool things going on. So if you guys um, are creative in video or if you're creative in uh, print ad and all that kind of fun stuff, it's, it's worth throwing your name in the hat because... They're really amazing, amazing prizes, all up for grabs, and uh, all to help celebrate Yuri's Night. You know, uh, we give a lot of emphasis to human spaceflight on this show, and I think a lot of people do in general, right? When you go see a shuttle launch, that's where just miles and miles of people are. I mean, it takes forever to get out of Kennedy Space Center because of all the people watching the shuttle launch. But then you go for a smaller launch, say something that's cargo only, it's very easy to get in and out of Kennedy Space Center. Very few people actually watch those uh, right. in comparison to, say, a shuttle launch. 
But that doesn't mean that what we're doing with these robotic and cargo missions and satellite missions is any less impressive or any less cool. In fact, there are a lot of really awesome missions launching this year that are doing some pretty cool things. One of them is Glory. So here's the launch video from Glory. D minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero and ignition of the Taurus rocket with glory, monitoring how changes in Earth climate may affect our lives. More seconds. Stage zero TVA nominal. The stage zero TVA system is operating as expected to maintain vehicle attitude. We're listening vehicle to power bus is nominal. We're listening to Rick Hankey, our Taurus launch vehicle flight engineer. So more of this, black and white, blah, blah, blah. Max Q, Pretty cool. I mean, beautiful launch of Glory. The vehicle passes through the and, um, the aerodynamic yeah, pressure. so Glory was going to be uh, looking at, turning around, looking back at the Earth, and looking at the, um, I want to say magnetosphere, but that wasn't it at all. It was uh, looking at the impact of the sun on the Earth. And it, it, was a, it was a pretty awesome mission. Unfortunately, not all went as planned. And that happens sometimes in yeah. space flight. Or ho hopefully not with human space flight. But no. um, Orbital Sciences, that was a Taurus rocket, uh, launched this bad boy. And the last launch prior to Glory uh, failed with a fairing separation. And here's what happened to Glory. We are at T plus 300 seconds. The vehicle speed error is indicating underperformance, uh, which is expected due to a uh, fairing not separating. We have a report that the system did pressurize, but the, it did pressurize. However, we have still have no indication of the fairing separating. Attention all stations. This is the NLM on the countdown and NLM net. We have had a contingency on the glory mission. Please enact the mishap. Had a contingency in the glory mission. Uh -oh. so basically, that means that glory, rather than circling the earth, released by the NLM or the ALM. Yeah, blah blah blah. Rather than glory that. circling the earth and uh, looking at our atmosphere, it's now uh, at the bottom of the ocean and taking deep sea measurements at this point, because it's... <laughs> or as uh, Geek Mom said in the chat room, all guts, no glory. Oh, boo! <laughs> oh, boo, a Geek I Mom. I like that one! Oh, man, actually, uh, there was another good one in the chat room <laughs> earlier from BZ when we were talking about the uh, airplane launch video. Yeah. He said, if everyone on, the left air, uh, everyone on the left side of the airplane can see Space Shuttle Endeavor, and everyone on the right side of the airplane can see everyone on the left side of the airplane looking at Space Shuttle Endeavor. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't it suck see, to be on the wrong side? of the airplane for that particular launch? <laughs> was it Paula Poundstone who was like, people on the left. We <laughs> hate the people on the right. <laughs> anyway, so. Well, so Glory didn't. <laughs> glory glory isn't blew faring up in well. a blaze of glory. Actually, it didn't really blow up. It just kind of didn't, uh, no bad good sparing stuff. It just kind of. Pfft. So, uh, yeah, oh. that's really unfortunate because that would have been a really cool satellite. Um, but the X-37B, this is that super secret space plane. It's the unmanned <coughs> space shuttle that yes. the Air Force is working with. They already had one orbit a bunch of times, like for six months. Here's a launch for the second one. FTS arm. 90 seconds. One twenty. Fork is armed. FTS count started. 115. Reduce FTS for launch. Roger. And we're now inside one minute, 55 seconds and counting. Oh, I forgot to edit this down. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. We're in T minus two minutes. You know what? Let's just talk over this at this point. Okay. 45 seconds. Because, yeah. Might as well. 
But uh, I'll, as the chat room said, Orbital, pay attention. This is how you do it. <laughs> That's so mean. <laughs> Ouch. That is kind of mean, actually. <laughs> uh, the chat room's talking about right now, um, it's not so secret of the space plane. The first space plane, they did find the orbit pretty quickly, and I believe they've already found the orbit of this one. And you can go to, like, what is it, ny20.com or something like that. Something like that, yeah. And you can just, you can watch in real time the orbit of the super secret space plane. That, you know, doesn't exist, so. No, well, we all know it exists. Nine, they just won't tell us what they're eight, doing with it. Seven. N2YO.com. Thank you, Will. Five. Four. Uh, Chris says she likes the MT3K version. Atlas engine ignition, zero, and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket Look carrying the second OTV mission for the oh, United States Air Force. Right? This is a liquid rocket. Look at how much slower it is when there's no solid involved. Yeah. You're hearing the voice of Marty Malinowski providing launch vehicle ascent data. Let's listen in for mission progress. Picture program has begun. Vehicle response looks good. Tank pressures are stable. Plus, better voltages are good. I should put an ITAR graphic on top of there. <laughs> just have the ITAR graphic. Just tracking, just tracking the I, no, yes, the ITAR graphic right on top of the ferry. Just to put it. <laughs> engine continues to operate well. Pump speeds are stable. Jacker pressures are good. It's all. It, it is kind of weird to see the difference between them. because the space shuttle has two solid rocket engines. It does ignite. That thing is it I goes. Mean, it's going right. This. This is a liquid engine, view, so it, 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 it just, the, uh, it just builds up slowly. For the set mix ratio. Yeah, uh, and as Heldesk mentions in the chat room, kind of like a Saturn V, absolutely. So there you go, there was a successful launch of the next military right, space two, plane that's, uh, that's doing miles. top secret things in space. Down we would tell you what it is, but we have no idea what it's doing in space. And even if we did, we couldn't 80. tell you. And that's, that's pretty so awesome. So, you know, th that all happened during STS-133 while it was flying around doing its doing its little mission that it does. Uh, <laughs> wow, oh, so know. mean. Oh, no. There was also the rollover of Endeavor that I got to see. Yeah, and actually we should show you guys in post-show the pictures. I'm very jealous because Carrie Ann got to stay in Florida. Uh, she went to a space conference and got to go to the rollover. Uh, and the rollover is when they go from the orbital processing facility to the vehicle assembly building. They go and from the ops to the VAB. The ops to the VAB. <laughs> and that's where they, they act, they quite literally just dr basically drive the shuttle. Drive the shuttle? Really? Mm. It's more push of a push. It, push, <laughs> the sort of pull, push it this way, pull. pull it that way. Yeah, it's where they move the shuttle <laughs> from one building to another, and yeah. so it just it rolls across. And you got closer to a shuttle than I personally what, have ever been. What's really cool is that um, it's it's sort of the last big press post press opportunity, if you will. Uh, it's uh, everyone who's worked on the shuttle gets to kind of come out and they hold a cute little banner and we're behind you, Endeavor. And everybody gets their little picture. And um, yeah, it's it's it was impressive. It was very, very cool. And so I'm, Carrie Ann has now I... been closer to an orbiter than I ever have. Or probably will be. And yep. And that, <laughs> here's a challenge to you guys. We need to fix that because I'm not cool with this scenario. <laughs> Let me tell you that. She's got some great photos, and I'm in Canada doing a tour because I had to leave Florida, go to Canada. Right. We like to stay for the whole window. So I left Florida, went to Canada doing my tour. I'm up on stage. I get this little MMS message <laughs> of her of her with the oh, right there. Right, because I was like, guess where oh, yeah. I am? I was pissed. So, yeah. I mean, happy and pissed at the same time. Yeah. You know, one of the things we do in this show, the whole reason Space Cast is here is because we want to get you guys excited about space flight again. It's not just about space news, and it's about the community. It's about the conversation. It's yeah. about ev everything that goes into the awesomeness that is humans in space. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to find different people that are kind of doing stuff like this. It's, and it's hard to do stuff like this. And not a lot of people have the initiative to make stuff go. And I think it was Quantum G. I don't remember who found this kid. It was Quantum G or some regular BS. in the chip. Uncle BS? I think both of them. I think Uncle BS mentioned it or... Anyhow, one of our, our regulars uh, pointed us to a YouTuber, a kid, who is doing uh, Space News updates. He looked to be about weekly. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he has a little bit of a following. But I thought it would be really cool if, as uh, the collective space community that we've got here at Space Vidcast, if we all kind of went over 
and watched his videos and we gave him positive barred him. Give him positive feedback because he is doing he's putting himself out there. You know, yeah. actually we've got a quick clip. Take a look. Take a look at this clip uh, and just take a look at what he's doing. It's pretty cool. Here it you is go. pretty cool. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Mike, and I do space news on this channel, obviously. Um, <laughs> uh, in my last few videos, I was talking about Bigelow Aerospace, which does the inflatable space station. Links below to uh, find out uh, all the information about that. I'm not going to go over all of that to, uh, right now in this video, so you can check those other ones out for that. But the reason I was talking about Bigelow Aerospace was to give a little bit of back history on a proposal that has come out from NASA, from a future technology reference design team. Um, and the idea that they've come out with is what they're titling the Nautilus X. Now, the Nautilus X is a combination of different uh, commercial and uh, government programs. and. You just gotta see this thing. I'm so excited about this. So excited about this because this is a real spaceship. This isn't just a small crew capsule. This is a real spaceship. I mean, just look at this thing. Just look at this thing. That's so awesome. You can see the uh, inflatable sta space stations in the back. Those are gonna be the Bigelow space stations. And it's gonna be powered by a Vasimir ion engine, which will be much faster to get it to, to Mars or to the moon or, or anywhere where it's headed. The point is that this is a long duration, deep space spacecraft. And they're proposing that it only be a space only spacecraft. Yes, yes, as the chat room is saying, Youthful enthusiasm. That for the is, win. For the win. Oh. That is what I'm talking about. Space Vidcasters, I challenge you. The link is at the bottom of the screen. Go over to his channel. Subscribe to his channel and give him positive feedback. Tell him how awesome he is. Tell him how awesome he is for putting himself out there. And, you know, he, he looks like he's young enough to still be in school. Possibly, yeah. Right? Like 20s. Yes. So I'm not sure. Um... I don't know that for sure, but if he is, then he's really putting himself out there. Because if yeah. you remember being in school and the peer pressure that you had to go through, uh, would you have been willing to put yourself? I wouldn't. I wouldn't be doing this. I mean, show he's clearly doing all this like on his own. Twenty-four. Like, so that's a little okay. old. That's that. But still. Uh, but that, still, I mean, I, yeah. that is just. We wouldn't awesomeness. have been doing that at twenty-four. No, no. So. <laughs> 24 is the new sixteen. Twenty-four is the new sixteen. Says our director. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, and the chat room said we need to get him on the show. But before we do any of that, go over, give him some views, give him some love, and let him know that what he's doing is important, that you care about it. And by the way, I like that particular clip because he was talking about Nautilus, which has been in our wiki as a potential upcoming story mm -hmm. forever, mm -hmm. but we haven't actually covered it yet. And it's funny, I think it's been there since like episode 401, and it just keeps falling forward to like 402, 403, 404. Right, right. So now Sadly. we can remove that from the wiki Yay! <laughs> as a possible upcoming story. How's that, kids? All right. Uh, on that note, uh, yeah, exactly. So they're saying that you just subscribed to the channel. Um, yeah, and then we're tweeting it out. Tweet it out. Uh, get it going. You know, it, by the way, no reason you can't start your own. And if you're too shy to be in front of camera, that's okay. It's all about getting people around <laughs> so you. So are we. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm too egotistical to not be on camera. Pretty so. much. Uh, it's all about people getting excited about space, right? And you can do that in many different ways. Doing a live internet show, or any show, an on-demand, any type, anything like what we're doing or what he's doing, or something new that neither one of us have thought of, whatever it is, that's one method. But another way to do it, Start a Yuri's Night party. It doesn't have to be the big, huge 10,000 person party. Yeah. It can be you and five friends gather around a TV with some popcorn and some uh, some chips and some beer and whatever you want and just celebrating be humans being in space. We've got a global webcast that's going on, so you can tune into that. But register it as a party. Let people come over and engage them on space. The other thing I thought of, and this is uh, inspired by BZ, which BZ doesn't know that this was in that he inspired me he's to say resident, so. He's our resident um, but rocket scientist. But in many 
because uh, it happens to be on a Tuesday this year, yes? Oh, I have no idea. I believe it's on a Tuesday. And in many cities across the country, there is Trivia Tuesday in a lot of different places, not just in bars. And if you're going to go to Trivia Tuesday anyway, you might as well call it a Yuri's Night Trivia Tuesday. Just, just saying. saying. Exactly. Uh, so start a Yuri's Night Party. Maybe a Yuri's Night Party isn't for you. You know what we're going to be doing soon is, um, you would mentioned the Yuri's Night print ad campaign. Yes. Space Vidcast just started doing print ads in the new Space Magazine. Yes. So if you oh, subscribe... I to grab one. Uh, if you subscribe to the I brand pictures. new New Space Magazine, mm -hmm. we have got a full page ad and we're going to make that available online for you to download. And, to, and it's actually one of those really inspiring ads. I might even make it available so that you can... Uh, I'm not going to say that on camera. So, because uh, <laughs> I don't want to commit myself to it. I haven't decided what I want to do. We might it. do stuff with it. Exactly. Yay. We might even give you the ability to do stuff with it. But <laughs> you'll be able to download that and other inspirational type things that may or may not have Space Vidcast on them. Yeah. Just to get people interested. Go around to bars, hang them up, right? Go around to wherever, post these things. Find ways to inspire people. Let them know that the space shuttle is ending and that's okay, right? It's, it's not the end of an era is the beginning of a whole new one is right. how, you, how we should be looking at it we shouldn't be sad we should be excited for the future and when you look even on our space fit i'm on a rant right now aren't i even when you look on our space vidcast uh, youtube channel and yes. you look in the comments you've got oh thanks obama for canceling the space shell now human blah 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 that's not the point no it's all about the future. It's all about pushing humanity into space, going beyond low Earth orbit, and going and visiting the stars. And we can't do that with the space shuttle. Great vehicle, boom, we love it. I grew up with it, I'm going to miss it. Lots of amazing people worked on this vehicle. It can't even get to the moon, so how do we expect to get any further than that? It's time to go, it's time to retire, and get this enthusiasm out there. You guys can do it too. She's it's exactly what it's, her name is, she's a shuttle. She's a taxi Jeez. to get from here, the ISS, and home again. Yeah, so you, my point is don't just rely on us or other people who are passionate about this. You have a passion too. You can get out there. There's something you can do. Maybe I didn't mention it on camera. There is something you can do to get other people excited and passionate about human spaceflight because the more people that are excited about this, the larger the potential market could be. You if go. you get people excited about going into suborbital flight, the larger the market for Virgin Galactic, Armadillo Aerospace, X-Core. SpaceX? And, uh, SpaceX isn't really entering that market. But, you know, companies like that uh, who are trying to do the suborbital space flights, the larger that market becomes and the more incentive they have to try to drive that price down to get a larger user base going out there, which means the easier it will be for you, the space geek, to go into space, uh, which means easier for me to go into space. Too. Nate says, can I get an amen? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to get up on my soapbox. Yes, you did. So uh, on that note, that's our show. Thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, we're going to have uh, continued coverage of the rollout. Um, but for now, uh, post -show. I have no good close. No, but we are going to do post show, so stick around. Post show, there you go. Here's the closing graphic. It's pretty.